Hey guys, in this section we would see how to apply basic wave materials to our model in here. So this is your toolbar for the V-ray and right at the top you have M which is for materials. Go ahead and click on it. If there are any materials under scene materials here, you could just delete them one by one. Just select them and hold right click and just say remove. So we have a, a clean, absolutely clean uh, kind of a slate here. So how to create a new material in V-Ray is very simple. You just have to right click on this create material standard. So you could create a couple of materials uh, just by doing the same method. And then just double click on this and just rename this as whatever material you need to assign to it, say concrete and maybe glass, maybe wood. <coughs> And maybe another material called as grass. So let's come back to concrete. And under concrete, if you look in here, you just have to expand this plus sign. And basically, you don't have any layers except for a diffuse layer. So diffuse layer is essentially nothing more than just the color that you need to assign to the material. It's either a color or it is something else. So let's just explore the color option and just put, this is your color swatch. You could just select any color you wish here, right? Or you could select it right from here. Just say, okay. Let's make it a little lighter. Now you could see a preview over here. Once it's done. So I need to make sure all of my walls are on the walls layer. So we can check that under properties, yes. And then we can go ahead and in this section of M, we just have to click right in here. And what we do want to do next is, these are your default Rhino materials. So if I change any material here, let's say I want to put a green, for example. So basically that green gets applied here because if you really want to apply V-ray materials, we need to do something else. We need to make sure this is checked. And then this material, you would have to browse which material you want to apply, let's say concrete. And then you have to say, okay. So now this material will override the Rhino's material. Yeah. And we have it applied uh, for all of the walls and columns, because I, I guess the columns are also under the same layer. So um, you need to, kind of strategize really uh, there are two ways you can strategize how to kind of organize your materials really either you could create material based layers let's say for example you would create a layer called as concrete let me just take it right on top and I could create a glass material And then what I could do is I could just go under windows and maybe if there's this glass, I would have to just drag this glass there and then come back to doors. And maybe if there's a glass panel here, I'll have to put in all here. So if you put it under the material, you, the, the ease is that you don't, you just have to change it here. And whether it's a glass material of door or window or anything else, it would apply it at once. Whereas let's assume we have the other type of layering, which is by way of building elements, so you have windows, doors, there are building elements. And then under that, you would have the subcomponents like this. And if you have glass here, and let's assume there's glass here again. So then what we'll have to do is we'll have to assign glass material over here, as well as we'll have to come in here and apply. So sometimes it may be a lot of duplication of applying the same materials, but in, in different layers and stuff. So in a way, um, if your model is ready and everything, you don't have to further work with the uh, elements, the components and stuff, you know, hiding them and working on individual parts and stuff, then I think it's, it's a good practice. You create materials and instead put, maybe, you know, put all of the walls and the concrete, all of the glass and the glass and all of that. Uh, but I, I generally prefer this method, like you create elements and then you can apply the materials right in here because that way, if you want to come back and, and do some changes to elements and hiding some elements and working on some, then you could do it with very much ease. And if all of my walls are under these layers, 
then I really wouldn't know what are walls and what are windows and stuff. So it would be very difficult for me to work around. So I, I generally prefer creating uh, layers like this and and applying the materials within those subcomponents and stuff. Anyway, so we've created our first material here, which looks like this. And um, we haven't assigned anything to glass, I guess. So the glass will be under windows now. So there's no material. So by default, everything has been applied as uh, white or gray by Rhino. Anyway, so we don't have any transparency. We're not able to see the glass inside and the interiors. So uh, before doing glass, what we could do is we could just tweak this material and just see what other settings are there for this material. So we go back to our concrete under diffuse. So diffuse is essentially the color. Okay, it's just the color equivalent um, of the material. So you, we have assigned a color here. Now we have another option here wherein if you want to have a texture instead and override this color, then there is this M button. M is basically map, MAP. So you can hit on map here and under this you won't have anything here because it's checked none here. So we need to go to text bitmap and then we could choose i have given you an elective folder we have this textures folder and you have two folders of textures so you could go either the one of these there isn't any bricks or concrete over here so we could go to maybe the first one and check some tiles and some concrete so okay you can go for some concrete and again if you look at this concrete there are three images you have one two three there are very very like images the names are all the same except for one small digit that you see here this one is D, this is B, and this is B again. So what does this all mean is basically <coughs> the way you get these textures online on the internet are uh, basically they would either be three numbers for the same material or four such files for the same material. Uh, we'll come back to that as to what really are, how, how different are they and what do they do differently. So basically, essentially what we wanted to choose is the diffuse color, the actual concrete material is this one so this is diffuse so d for diffuse so we just apply it you can just have a preview of it and this is how it looks uh don't bother changing anything else because there's a little advanced settings you don't have to handle them right away say okay and this is just a preview it's applied and it's not applied to the walls i don't know why i guess because a default material is not gray. You see over here. So we need to go in here, assign this material, and we have to choose concrete here. And then it should have changed. Let's change. There you have it. Well, the scale of this is quite big, so there is another method how to kind of scale it down and stuff. So maybe probably that's in the other section that we will cover. So our concrete is applied to all of the walls all at once and if I want to do any other changes to it, I just have to click in here and not here, sorry, do the changes here, you can put another texture, whatever, change another color. Now if the texture is residing over here, no matter what color you change to, it won't have any effect because this particular person always overrides this one, very important. Okay, so now that we are in this dialog box, let's go to our glass material and Generally, glass has a diffuse color of uh, some shades of grays. It's not completely dark. It's not completely white. It's somewhere in between. You know, could be even a slightly darker shade, like this, or even lighter. So let's go with the lighter one and say OK. And glass has got transparency. So there's, a, there's a transparency setting here. Black means completely opaque. So white means completely transparent and I guess we want somewhere in between here again. So we choose that. And you can put a map even here. So we'll come to that later. So we have the diffuse layer done. Now this controls only the color aspect of the glass. So this is how the glass is going to look. I mean it's transparent as you see. But in a glass, if you really know, the light bounces in and it refracts as in it really bands inside and you won't really see the geometry within the I mean the geometry of the background uh, that is seen inside of the glass it won't be like you know won't be accurate I mean it would be bent and all that so so that's controlled by another property of glass now now any property of any material is always controlled by uh, this pro 
this parameters so if you see if I right click and go to create layer there are a couple of properties over here so for each material you could apply these properties okay you have diffuse already applied so we want a reflection here and refraction for the glass so we can first go to refraction and let's just check what is there under refraction so if you see now under refraction the the light is already banned inside and that's how you don't really get to see the same geometry from within inside the glass as well it's banned it's something else altogether of course you could control how much how much of that band should happen under this section here not under this under refraction you could control it with this parameter one second i don't know what has happened okay so come to refraction you just don't really have to change anything over here except that if you want to change the color on the color what does the color say here color is basically if it is completely white again the refraction would be more the bending of the light would be more if it's black you won't have any bending at all so i think somewhere in between some gray shade should be fine yeah you can even put a texture but we would not put any texture here as of now and we won't change so sorry actually i should have changed it under this it's already white so we don't have to change anything here we have changed the color of the glass so we can make it a little darker again and we leave it to white if you want you can just change it slightly so and just leave all the settings as it is okay another property we require for glass is reflectivity or reflection now what does the reflection do if i click on reflection and preview uh, if you could see on the edges there's this light that has been reflected because it's a glass surface you can't see the reflection really but if it was a metal or something you can quite see the reflection very well so you can again control that under this you could have a map again for this and by default it's white so white again means complete reflection like if this was a metal it would have looked like a chrome um, chrome metal so which is quite reflective so again it's not a good idea to go for completely white you can make it slightly grayish and then we can so all of these layers if you click individually it will just show you preview only for that property if it's diffuse it won't show you any reflections if it's a refraction it will show you only reflections so if you really want to see all of those materials put all together then you just have to click on the main material and say preview so we are getting some sort of glass material here with a reflection that you see here and with the refraction and a bit of tinge of gray color to it okay now now that we are our glass is ready we could just apply it to maybe our windows we come to our windows we come to our glass and we just click on this one assign materials and we go to browse choose glass here and there we have it we have the transparencies you can see through and stuff so likewise if you want to do the frames then you could come back to M you could go to wood and you could go to diffuse you could select the material here to go to the other folder choose one of these so there's no bump material of this can't see any bump material of this okay anyways i can go ahead and choose it preview and just say okay then <coughs> we'll go to the frames that should apply this so there then i don't know probably i have not put all of this frames under frame section or is it under those i guess it's under those so one second I don't know, 
it just gets stuck correctly. Yeah. So go under frames and select your wood. And yeah. Of course, it's not to the right scale. And in the next section, we would see how to kind of scale it down and stuff. But you get the point. It's applied to all the frames, if you see. I guess even the window frames I've put under those. So anyways, you get the point. And uh, let's come back to a concrete material now here. Now, when you render this, in your final render, this will look like a very smooth surface. But it isn't really a smooth surface because it's concrete. And if you can really see, there are these pores and there are these noises and happening. And so there are <coughs> sort of kind of um, very uneven surfaces happening here. Which in the if you take a very close up shot and stuff, it makes sense to show that depth into the geometry of the walls. Now, how do you do all that? So if you come back to M and go to diffuse material again. One second, please. Nothing is happening. Hello. Give me a second. I think it's taking a lot of time to. I don't know what it, what is it calculating. I haven't done really anything. Okay, so let's just do it again. Come to M, concrete, diffuse, and. Under diffuse, there is another section called as bump here. So, what the bump does really is it really gives you gives your material some sort of a depth. Uh, it would make it rough. It would take things in, take things out, and really make it uneven and give it some real quality of texture. So that's control on the bump. You need to check in here and click on M. Then again, go back to your text bitmap. And this time, instead of using concrete diffuse, we will use concrete bump. So basically, the difference between these two images, if you really see, is basically this has got a lot of kind of colors and kind of a lot of hue and saturation. Whereas if you look at this, this is purely black and white. So the bump texture bump material has to be really black and white so all the blacks on the material would go inside and all the white material would kind of project out so that way it would help you in giving some sort of texture or noise to your material so if you just use this and then see the preview you won't really uh, see the difference here but when we apply it and when we do a final render a close-up shot of that material you know probably should be able to see and you could control how much of that an uh, texture or unevenness you want to show so if you want it to be very little you could just change it to as little as 0.3 or so 0.3.4 one is the max so we will go by default one and you will just say okay now it has applied it but you can't quite see in the rendered view here but if we hit render Oh, sorry last time when we had changed all the settings I did not save all the render settings so it would still show it as black so maybe um, maybe what I'm trying to say is when when it's rendered you would really see some sort of depth to the surface and stuff so when we revert back to our settings probably I should be able to show you if you go back to materials again now besides bump there is another property here called as displacement what is the difference between bump and displacement now bump is a false kind of texturing of the material so it this is a false thing you know it's not real it doesn't do anything with the geometry here but if you put the same map under displacement okay so I guess there's a different layer for displacement altogether In a second, I 
Не. So, yes. Probably I should be able to check if I remove this. Where has the displacement gone? Give me a second, please. Generally, it comes under diffuse, but it's not allowing me to change it. Okay, it's over here. Just have to check this and under map again. If we go to text with map, and this is your diffuse texture. So don't confuse between diffuse D and displacement here. So this is the displacement. If you see, this is much richer than this one. It doesn't have to be. Both these images are essentially black and white images or shades of grays. So basically, uh, the shades of gray here because um, the roughness doesn't have to be that stark. You won't really want to have you know a lot of thing coming in and out. So it's, it's just going to be very subtle. That's why it's gray in shade. So we'll choose this one now here. If you're using displacement, you really don't have to choose bump. So you could put this one off. It's either this or that. But this is a false thing and this is a real thing. So real in the sense, when you apply this displacement, the geometry itself changes for real. I mean, things go in and out for real. It's not just a fake thing. So, so these are basically essentially the important properties of any material. It's diffuse, which controls the color, the texture, bump, which is basically gives you a false kind of um, uh, roughness or you know noise uh, in your texture, things coming in and out. And displacement is a real, um, it, it changes the geomet geometry of the texture in real actually. So, and besides that, if I go back to reflection, so these are the other properties that you have like reflection. So you would have reflection, even if you have a metal uh, material, you would have reflection and you would have diffuse for metal again. You may not have, you will not have reflection. So reflection is only for glass and things. Now another thing I would like to tell you, which I have not talked about, if you go to reflection section of this material, see, uh, I had not done anything with this. I just changed this one, I think, but this was overridden by something else because this is highlighted by default. Now, what is this M is basically, it's a Fresnel. Uh, it's a Fresnel uh, property of the glass, which is assigned automatically when you put a reflection layer. Now, it, it is some sort of an algorithm which has got some components of which IOR is a, is a very important element of Fresnel. Now, what is IOR? IOR full form is index of reflectivity or index of diffraction. You could Google it and check, and these numbers would vary for each material. So for metal, it would be very as high as 20, and for water, there would be a different number. For glass, generally, this is the number. So you don't have to really change any other settings than this. You you put an IOR number here, and it controls how things look. You know, if you want to look, the, if you want uh, this material to look like silver or gold, then if you put the right IOR, it will kind of take care of that. So leave this to default, you just have to change this and that's about it. So whereas in refraction again, if you go back to refraction again, you will have the same thing by default checked. Again, there's a text fresnel here. So you don't have to really change it for glass, but if it is metal, then you have to tweak it. Uh, another important thing is that this the organization of these layers is very important. Now, in a material like glass, a refraction, which is a property of light to bend, has really have to override any other property. So it goes right on top. You can just hold it and put it on top, and then the reflection, and then the diffuse. The diffuse is the last. Let me click on this. It is slightly different than what we had earlier. And you can go to grass material, go to diffuse, and you can apply a glass material here. Then go to text bitmap can use some grass, say OK. Okay, and you want to apply grass. We don't have anything here. So what we could do is we could just drop in on V-ray plane, V-ray inf infinite plane. And then <coughs> it's over here. 
and then I can apply this material even by object. So this is selected, so I will come under material here and Okay, what we could do is we could create a plane layer. We would call it as ground. So I can call it as ground and put this one on the ground. Then come here, apply the gray material. hasn't changed okay I have not applied it by VD okay, it should have changed I don't know why it's not changing let me just have a look at the grass material I think it's stuck up again so uh, it should apply uh, maybe I have to do it again maybe the mat the map has not been applied properly so you try doing it, it it should work and don't worry about the size of this plane you don't even have to scale it because when you do the final render it's an inf infinite plane so it will go up to the horizon and it will have grass applied to it now the only thing that you need to do is then you know readjust the scale of this because even the walls because and the frames so we will do it in the next section thank you